wow, he likes me, wow, she's really hot, wow, I'd love to have some kids, I think he'll do. <laughs> kind of like his chin. <laughs> there's some weird stuff going on! And then there's I love you, do you love me? And what your dead giveaway is, you don't love, you need. Scripturally, from the beginning, it ought to be because of the fullness of God in the man. Not because she's hot. Not because he's lonely or she's lonely or insecure or honored that he wants her. If there's a woman in a man's life, according to Genesis, it's because there was fullness in the man. I think only in that place could he love her like Christ loves the church. Yes. I think men only in that place were ready to love her like Christ loves the church. Yeah. I guess if we don't have that place, maybe we just need her. Yes. Because she gives us something we need. <laughs> don't sell cheap women. You're more than cooking meals and scratching itches. <laughs> don't be reduced. Don't compromise. I had a lady tell me one time, well, there's no man out there you're describing. The one you're describing isn't out there. And she's frustrated. She kept slipping. She was young. She just slept with a boy and came to me crying. She slept with a boy and she knew it wasn't her answer. And she went to bed defiled in her bed at night and cried. And she woke up and felt far from the Lord and, and felt dirty and felt all kinds of things because of her convictions. But yet she was driven by this needy thing. She came to me crying. She said, I know what you're going to tell me, Pastor. And she snapped on me. She said, you're going to tell me about this man? And she described the man that I've described to her a dozen times. <laughs> and she said, the thing you have to realize, he is not out there. That man you're describing is not out there. <laughs> and I'm like, so I just gently reached across the kitchen table and I squeezed her elbow. And as she was freaking out, I kept squeezing a little tighter and tighter. And she realized I was squeezing tight. But she just stopped and got her attention. And I leaned in with the most gentle voice, full of passion. I said, so what? Because he's not out there, you compromise. You sell cheap. You defile your conscience and wake up ashamed over and over. Or do you position yourself to be a prize to be one to make a draw on Christ in a man? Yes. Or do you just keep selling cheap and get on the half-off rack? Oh, yeah. yeah. Big lots. You know, comfortable when you're off field. I can feel the atmosphere. Some people are nervous. So, what do you do? Compromise truth to meet need? Or get fulfilled in Him so your needs change? Mm. What do you do? Because you can't find somebody in love with Jesus. You just find somebody that's kind of in love with Jesus. You pay a price for that. <laughs> or do you stand your ground? Be complete, secure in him, and never enter into a relationship because you're needy. You enter into a relationship because you're fulfilled. Yeah. What would that look like? Mm. If a man knows who he is, and he joins with a woman who knows who she is. Wow. And they're not driven by need. Wow. And they're both in love with the king. Powerful. I think yeah. that sounds like the beginning. Yes. <laughs> what would that conception look like? Wow. What would that baby be? Wow. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God had a really good vision from the beginning. Yeah. Right, yeah. I think man sinned and fell and lost that thing, and then we muddied it up all the more. Even. Sometimes I think we compromise and we make excuses for the things we need and want and desire and try to blend the gospel into who we are instead of become what he said. Yes. And all of a sudden you incorporate him into your life instead of him becoming your life. 
You know, instead of these part of your confession or part of your belief system instead of living from the inside. You are not the CEO of Jesus Incorporated. <laughs> Arkansas preaching like this, and that's when he told the college boy that drove home from the service crying. He got so shook up because of where his life was. And he's driving home on, a, on an Arkansas road. He told me this with tears. He was shaking. He had an encounter. I love it. I love when I just preach and then they leave and the Holy Spirit just follows them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's so awesome. You say, what about follow up, brother? Oh, they're being followed. <laughs> Son of man is going to, and he's going to 